Hello, hello. How is everyone? I would love to know where you're at. Thanks for joining me and my new bags. <laughs> I thought I'd bring Gary in as well. Why not? Just waiting to see who's popping in. Let me know if you're here by joining the chat. That would be great. Lisa's here. Hi, Lisa. New York City. <laughs> Connor, hey, Beesh. <laughs> it's a bit early for you to be awake, Connor, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Meredith. Congratulations on 6K subscribers. What a massive achievement. Thank you, Catherine. This morning really is just a bit of a Q&A. So this morning, um, once, you know, people get online, um, I'm going to open it up to you guys. You've watched the video, no doubt, so you have seen the bag. But uh, I know that Fendi in Australia is doing made to orders you know, in this coming March, um, I think whether you're doing a Fendi made to order or any made to order, if you've got questions, happy to answer those. If you've got questions about my bag, happy to answer those. And then we can just have a general chat as well. So yeah, I think, um, you know, the world is our oyster and I've got about an hour and 15 minutes that, um, that we can talk this morning. Hello, Jen. <laughs> I'm glad you could make it. I'm glad you could make it. So if you haven't already, please give the live a thumbs up. As Jacob says, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Hi, Erica. You're in New York too, aren't you? Long way away. Oh, hey, Chantel. <laughs> Candace is here. Hello. It's always nice to see who's um, who's around and what time of day because I know when I do these a little bit later on, um, it's very hard for people on the other side of the world to stay up. Like some people are up at 1, 2 a.m. in the morning. Meredith has a question already. Okay, if you were doing a made to order this year, what style of bag would you consider? Um, if I was doing a made to order this year, well, I, that's a hard one. Um, I did not know until, you know, just before going into um, my appointment that I was going to do a baguette trunk. So I would say, honestly, I'd be open to doing any style. I think it depends on what's in the trunk for me as well. Like that's really inspiring in terms of the materials because then you start to think about those materials in different shapes. And also the lookbook. I'm not sure if they update the lookbook um, every year or not, but the lookbook definitely provides a lot of inspiration as well. So I haven't really answered your question. Um, I heard a little rumour that Fendi Firsts are going to be offered in this year's Made to Order. Um, so Meredith, the question is, what will you do in your next MTO? <laughs> Bella made it. Hello, Bella. It's 11 p.m. in Spain, not too late. That's late by my standards. <laughs> That's late by my standards. So whilst you're all getting here, I am going to give you a bit of a look at this baby. Um, I had a couple of questions on my video as well. It's actually beading, and I'm not sure how well the camera is picking up the beading, but if I turn at different angles, um, you can see that the green material is beads, if that's close enough for you. Um, so it's pretty amazing. Um, the buckle is looking magic in my monitor. I don't know about you guys. Um, yep, you can see it. Thanks, Connor. 
um the crocodile and the different like the small croc here and the larger scales on the front i think was a really great choice as well um because it, it just doesn't make it so busy i think that they really considered how to make this bag and if i put it back here you can't see the ruthenium hardware and oh, that's what i was really worried about because in the sketch it looks really dirty but it looks yeah it's so good it's glistening does this feel like the ultimate bag moment Catherine said what could possibly top this she is amazing um it feels pretty surreal uh overused word i know but um to think that i mean i was overwhelmed that i could have a meet and greet at fendi that fendi would host a meet and greet for me i just there's some realistic things that um i guess filters that you put on your life and you go you don't even let yourself think about that you don't even consider that's a possibility and i think designing a handbag is one of those things i mean now i know a lot more about luxuries so um i understand that that is something that luxury houses offer but before i knew that i just thought i, I didn't even think about it you know um so yeah it's a pretty it's a pretty cool thing to do and that's probably why I'm not doing an MTO this year because if my bag had been delivered in November when it was originally scheduled to be delivered, I would probably feel um, better about doing a made-to-order this year because they always seem to be in March. But the fact that I won't even have my bag for like a month before the made-to-order, it's just too much. It's too much money. It's too much decision-making. It's too much. I can't do it. So I feel like it'll be really good to have a year's grace and enjoy this and, you know, think a little bit more and then do something next year. <laughs> I, and I don't know what that is. Um, I'm going back to read your comments. Yeah, um, I wanted to do Galusha Bella. Um, so Galusha is Stingray and that was one of my original designs for the trunk, a forest green Galusha. Um, but Fendi's rule at the time, and I think it still is, is that you can't use Galusha just for these trim parts. It has to be the whole bag. And I think that's because it's very hard with a Galusha hide, it kind of butterflies from the inside out. It has a pattern. And so if you just take that pearly beaded kind of effect from the middle, then the other bits don't look any good on their own, you know, they don't shine as much. So, yes, I, Galusha in this trunk style is definitely something that I would look at again. <laughs> Not normally a purse, a morning person, but the, but the gods notified you, the Fendi gods, absolutely. Thank you, Bella. Connor says, I agree, Dale. Don't want to take away from the newborn feeling of your bag now. <laughs> Granny Grumps, hi, Dale. Beautiful dress. Can I ask where it's from? Thank you so much. Um, yes, it's a Kavari dress. I mean, I'm looking very booby in it at the moment, I've just noticed. But, um, yeah, it is beautiful. It's linen. Um, I put a highlight on my Instagram stories about it. It's, um, you know, when you start planning holidays and then you start looking for outfits to wear on those holidays, well, this was one of those situations. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I bought it. <laughs> um, Lisa asked if you have, where's that question, Meredith? Lisa asked if you have a plain buckle. I want to know the same. Yes, I do have a plain buckle. Um, it's in here. Would you like me to put it on and show you? I um, I kind of just took it off straight away. It actually looks good, um, but not as good as the as the crystal. So this is the plain um, ruthenium buckle, and I'll take this one off. <laughs> not doing a good job of that, am I? Okay, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> okay. Turns out I was just trying too hard. All right. Mm. 
Okay, and then you put this one, so that's what it looks like underneath. It just has these magnets and then it just slides on. So that's what it looks like without the bejeweled buckle. So it actually, that's how it was presented to me. And I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. That's good. I like it. It's cute. So, yeah, there you go. So this is the other little buckle. And, yeah, it's something that even in this year's Made to Order, I think that even if I didn't want to design a bag, I could purchase another buckle. God knows what I would choose, but I could do that. So I'll pop him here. Hi, Kaylee. My dress looks like Dior. Yeah, it does have some um, Dior vibes for sure. Good to know it's a strong magnet. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere, this magnet. Um, I want to know about the many situations in which you've held living crocodiles, Chris says. <laughs> okay, Chris. Uh, um, so I did talk about these in my video, but when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I lived in the far northwest of Australia, and there's an, a famous Australian icon. He's passed away now. Unfortunately, he was involved in a car accident, but... He used to relocate problem crocodiles. His name was Malcolm Douglas and he had a crocodile park that you could go and visit crocodiles of all shapes and sizes. Um, so right from a crocodile coming out of the egg. Um, and when crocodiles come out of the egg, they actually have like this yolk attached to their belly. So like humans come out of a placenta, we leave the placenta. The crocodile's kind of placenta from the egg, like a yolk, actually stays attached to their tummy and eventually like their tummy just kind of sucks it in. It's weird. Um, yeah, and they make this little quacking sound, which is funny, um, but super soft and like really cute. And then in 2019, I went back to that same park, um, which had been relocated, and I was able to hold a crocodile like this big, and it had its beak kind of taped up, um, so it couldn't bite you because they've got pretty good teeth. Um, and again, it still felt really soft and kind of supple. It's weird because when you look at the big old beasts that are like, I don't know how old, 50 years old, 60 years old, probably like a human, <laughs> um, they, you know, they have all these gnarly little um, spikes and things on them. Um, it's like an armour and it also helps them to glide through the water. Um, to see a crocodile in the wild is unbelievable. Um, I have not held anything bigger than this, but I've been on airboats like hovercraft and I've seen them in the wild in wetlands. And, yeah, for some reason you feel like you're going to lose your balance and fall overboard and get eaten. <laughs> I um, My, my brother-in-law has also seen crocodiles when he goes um, fishing for a mud crab. So, and that's scary. Winnie has held some snakes. I bet you have, girl. <laughs> uh, Chris has dated some snakes, yes, and I, I, I've known some snakes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, I love all the metaphors. Um, yeah, it does look good with the second buckle. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, it's a magnetic snap buckle. Yes, it is. A clear crystal buckle, you think, Meredith? Yeah, I think I was actually thinking about that this morning and I thought I wouldn't go with pink. I could go with like a clear um, Swarovski crystal. And the beautiful thing about the buckles is that they are baguette-shaped crystals as well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Erica, I would agree that the emerald buckle is more luxurious and the ruthenium is more edgy, definitely. Connor, I noticed on your strap they kept the intricacies of the croc leather on it, which gives it lots of dimension. Yes, let's look at the strap. So there's all different sized scales. Um, so it, it, you can imagine this kind of how big the hide would have been. I think you can see there that they're quite small and then they go quite big and there is no join. It's all one piece of leather. So 
that in itself is pretty special. And how difficult it would have been to catch that, like because they're not the scales aren't straight because the crocs the crocs belly kind of goes like that. So I don't know how they do it where they can just have. I know that they use lasers and things to cut hides. I've seen videos, but yeah, it's pretty extraordinary how they've been able to find a path and take that piece. It's really impressive. Winnie, I know I'm very drawn to it. What does that, what's a prep, does that mean? I don't know. Um, I don't know why I like pink and green. Um, I was talking to Laura from, she has a YouTube channel called Kamachika and um, she was saying green is very much a Sagittarian colour and I'm a Sagittarian so maybe that's it, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm so drawn to it but it's everywhere. Like at the moment I have my laptop sitting on my ironing board, it's very professional, and my ironing board cover is green and pink. Um this plant I bought during Vlogmas, not last year, but the year before, has pink and green, like, vibes. I, I don't know, and I don't know why it didn't occur to me at the time that it was such an obvious colour combination. I, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> um, would the ruthenium scratch easily? And what did they encase... What did they in case the beads come off? Oh, what about in case the beads come off? So would the ruthenium scratch? Um, yeah, I think it would definitely scratch. Look at that. Um, especially these parts. But it really is kind of a hand carry bag. I will not not use it. Um, but, yeah, it's quite a possibility that it will scratch. Um, if the beads come off, I don't know... The beads, I believe they make the beaded material on matting and then they affix that. So it's not, if I put it up here like this, I don't think it's beaded directly onto the bag, if that makes any sense. So I don't think a bead could come off. Um... Speaking of snakes, do you know if you can do a full python bag with an MTO? Uh, I believe you can. If it's the full MTO, the Celeria Peekaboo MTO that Connor recently did, they offered python as an accent. Um, but the full MTO, um, I'm pretty sure if you go back and watch my MTO vlog, you will see python as like a drawer of python samples so i'm pretty sure that you can do full python um did i choose the second buckle or do they come with the standard one um this buckle is the standard one chris so if you choose ruthenium hardware you get all your hardware ruthenium imagine if i'd have chosen gold or silver for this it just would have been too much i think um, and this is my second buckle. I could have chosen as many additional buckles as I wanted to, which, you know, is very tempting. And I've watched a couple of MTO unboxings um, where people have bought more than one buckle and I'm just adding up the dollars going, wow. Is your internet having problems, Meredith? Crux scales are not symmetrical, so that gives a very real look. Yeah, absolutely, Erica. Are there little studs on the front? A pink tint. Um, the studs are actually ruthenium, and yes, but they do look to have a pink tint because of their surroundings. They're actually um, not as um, punk rock as I thought that they would be. So, again, it's been made like a trunk. So, yeah, it's a cool touch. Excellent. Okay. All right. I'm catching up on comments. Hello, Deb. Deb's here. 
Um, Chris, my grandfather's car was the colour of your chair. I have fond attachments to that green. It's just a really, um, I don't know, it's really soothing. And I said to my husband, when we eventually move to the coast, I'll be decorating in like the British colonial style. And it's really been influenced from these really deep, rich colours and white backgrounds um, and, you know, lots of greenery and lots of um, timber and natural materials, stone, those sorts of things. So, yeah, I see it being a part of my home for quite a long time. Dale in this dress with this bag on this chair with the painting in the background, all that's missing is a cigar and a glass of bourbon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've never enjoyed cigars, but, you know, a menthol cigarette would have been nice. <laughs> you could always add another buckle later on, but the emerald one is perfect. Yeah, thank you, Chantal. 80s punk rock all the way. Does it fit a lot? Good question, Shelley. I actually put some things in it and it's it's not a practical piece at all. So if I open it up, you can see that I have managed to fit in my Dior lip glow. Then I've got my car fob. I've put some cash and cards and I've put in my Louis Vuitton um, card hold, um, key holder. But that's all that fits. <laughs> And I thought someone might ask that. So thanks for asking, Shelley. Connor, I think if you did silver hardware, it would match the cool pink, but not the green and gold would match the green beads, but not the pink. So the ruthenium is perfect. Yes. Thanks, Connor. I'm sure I had all those thoughts at the time, but I just so much time has passed that I forgot about my reasoning. <laughs> um, you could go for pre-loved for the buckles maybe. Oh, that's a good point, Chris. Um, the challenge is these little baguette trunks, they have smaller buckles than the baguettes do. So I would be hoping that somebody was selling a small baguette trunk buckle, um, which would really limit my options in that respect. Is it smaller in real life than you thought it would be? Um, no. So Fendi have had some of these baguette trunks, Catherine. Um they had the Perspex range in the men's, I think it was spring, summer last year. Um, there's still some around and I was able to try it on in store as well before I went for the design and that's why I chose this one because the bigger one to me looked too big and boxy. It reminded me of a tissue box in size. Um, I think if they were to offer soft trunks like Connors, that would be a good in-between size as well. Um, I knew it wouldn't fit much, but it doesn't really have to. And to be honest, if I'm going out, I'm not going to take this. I'll just take the keys out of it. I'll just throw the bits in and we're done. Um, tiny bags take a bit of sacrifice, but it's worth it. That's right, Winnie, they do. Um, yeah, I think our queen of the tiny bags, Winnie B, LV, she knows the sacrifice. For sure. Hannah says, I wonder whether Sydney the pigeon is watching with jealousy in the background. <laughs> well, it's quite funny. Um, on the name front with the pigeon, um, somebody, I cannot remember who suggested that we call the pigeon Gary because there's a book about Gary, the pigeon that can't fly. <laughs> and it's, um, I've not read the book. I don't know what the book's about, but. Look how nicely they go together. Um, but I feel like it's quite a fitting name for the pigeon. Um, I saw that Romina Rose May did a, a shopping vlog. Um, I haven't watched it yet on my feed and she's like the most ridiculous bag ever. And I'm like, yeah, join the club, girl. Um, does it stay open on its own when opened? Is this the pigeon, Erica, or the trunk? So if I open the trunk, no, it doesn't. It's got a fair bit of weight behind it, so it's very sturdy. Does it fit more than the, the petite male? Um, I can answer that for you, Chantel, no. The petite male fits, it fits your 
I mean, my phone fits in here, um, and I showed that in the unboxing, but the petite male would fit your phone, a card holder, and a lipstick, and a car fob. Um, so, I mean, that's the justification for still getting the petite male, right? <laughs> I need a slightly bigger bag. Um, uh, the pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> what did Mr. Addiction say about the pigeon? Look, I can't remember, but it wasn't kind. <laughs> it wasn't kind. Um, good question, Erica. And when I said to him, when I showed him this one, um, well, the day before, so the day before, um, I said, I'm going to pick up my bag tomorrow and um he said oh yeah how are you feeling about it and I said I really I feel a, a bit nervous to be honest I really do and he said um, I just need to turn my air conditioner up because it's getting hot in here um and he said yeah I feel nervous too I've seen the photos <laughs> and I was like oh, that's not very nice and then when I got it home and I showed him, he said, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, and that's all he said. So I don't think it's his favourite, but I don't think he hates it as much as he thought that he might have done. <laughs> um, yes, the pigeon neck matches the trunk, Hector. I know. When I was looking at it on the monitor there, I was like, look at that. They're just a cute little pair. I could do a double bag moment where I crossbody the trunk and I hold the pigeon for sure. <laughs> um, Connor and I are going for lunch later or brunch and he wants to sniff the bag. Yes, Connor, I will, I will bring the bag for you. Um, Dale? Okay, Winnie, I don't know my heating and air. Winnie, I, I don't understand your comment, Winnie. Dale was a FITAC unit. Heating and air, hubby loves you. <laughs> Can you write that again, Dale? Amy, I know this is all about your beautiful bag, Dale, but love your dress. Where's it from? Great colour. Thanks, Amy. It's a Kavari, the label dress. K-I-V-A-R-I, -I, the label. Still can't forgive your flower shorts wearing hubby for hating the purple sequin baguette. <laughs> we have very different tastes in things. Let's just say that, Bella. Very different tastes. Um, and I do all of the home decorating and this is his um, mother who passed away over 20 years ago. This is her lounge and it used to be like brown vinyl and he, he would just not ever let it go, and I understand why. But one of the, you know, real defining moments in our marriage was him trusting me to have it recovered, which it needed to be recovered, um, and letting me choose the fabric. And, yes, it's like a um, Catherine Martin, who's Baz Luhrmann's wife and costume designer. It's her green velvet, and it's so luxurious. It's amazing. <laughs> the pigeon scares me. <laughs> a lot of people have bird phobias. I never, um, I never knew how many people had bird phobias um, until sharing this. Winnie, we don't speak mouth of the South language. <laughs> you guys giving Winnie a hard time. You turned down your aircon. Is called a PTAC. Okay, like the remote. The remote control. Is that okay? I don't know. <laughs> That's like when I asked you what you ones meant and you were like, you ones. And I'm like, oh, I've wondered that for years. Um, you need to always incorporate green in your wardrobe. Yeah, I've like, I feel like since I did my colors, it gives you so much more confidence and I wish I would have done them before I did the MGO. I don't think I would have changed it, but I would have felt more confident earlier on. I wouldn't have felt so uncertain, I think. 
Love that your collection is truly yours. Thanks, Nicole. Um, good night, Deb. Package terminal air conditioner. Oh, my God. That is lingo. I'm not that professional with the whole air conditioning thing, but um, I am now. Thank you so much. I'm going to use that. I'm going to impress my husband. <laughs> um this is the first live chat leslie congratulations you made it have you ever considered the laweve elephant bag i don't know if this is controversial or not but i'm probably the only person i know that doesn't like elephants i don't like cows either and because elephants and cows are kind of related maybe i don't know no no elephants for me eileen loves a cat hi eileen I'm still waiting for my clover hill. I'm going to have it today. <laughs> my clover hill, sparkling rosé and Tasmanian raspberries. Do we have mod shots of the new baby? Well, after this live, I will do my Instagram post. Because I like to leave the video up for Instagram reel and an outfit post to pop up mod shots. So they will definitely be coming, Catherine. Hello from Chicago. Hi, Erin. Have you worn the new bag out and about yet? No, I have not. Um, it's been one of those funny things. It's like um, it reminds me of when I got my Louis Vuitton flower trunk. I just kept moving it around the house and I'd walk past and kind of go, hey, like, oh, my God, I've got it. Like it's really a special kind of um, thing to just soak up and enjoy so I, and I haven't had anywhere to go really, so there's been no opportunity, but um, I also have a lunch next week with the lovely Ada, Solly, because we're celebrating her 60th birthday together. And she has said to me from the moment I designed it, you and I are going to lunch with that bag. So definitely next week as well. Oh, good work, Leslie. So it's all just coming together for you. Hello, Nick. <laughs> nice to see you, Nick. You're obsessed with the pigeon and the MTO. I thought they'd be right up your alley, Nick. <laughs> Nicole, I've been using your videos as not so much subtle hints to my essay that we want MTO in Atlanta. Keep doing that. Um, there are, I'm surprised at the number of boutiques that don't get to host an MTO. Um, and I don't know why, because... Well, at least in Australia, I think they don't send the Fendi design team out. Whereas in other countries, I've seen MTOs in Hong Kong and Singapore where the design team have actually come out from Italy and it's been done in person, which is just wow. Um, I don't think that they would do that here because we're so far away, but um, definitely ask because the boutiques, they want to host these experiences just as much as you want to do them. Um, do we get a third video of you styling it with a range of outfits? Yeah, I could do a first impressions for sure. Does Fendi offer any special spa services? Not that I know of, Leslie, but I'm sure they do. So there was a spa service for the peekaboo last year and I took my white and violet peekaboos in um, to be sparred and that was just something that came up and my sales associate messaged me and I took them in. It was free. They were doing it for a week or something. Um, and they can do it while you wait. You make an appointment. So I'm sure they would do something. Thank you so much, Luxury Lover 85. Do you see for yourself carrying it more as a clutch or as a crossbody? Lisa, um, I don't know. I was holding it as a clutch before when I was thinking, you know, will I wear it today? Um, I think both. I think both. Um, I think in the evenings, obviously, a clutch, but, yeah, I don't know. Um, you're approved for a Tiffany baguette in round two. Oh, that's fantastic news, Nicole. Congratulations. You should have seen a few videos on the Tiffany baguette now, so that can make you all excited. Erica, it never occurred to me that people don't have access to these things. I'm so used to New York. Yeah, and you guys get everything, you know, and fair enough too because it's New York, right? 
So um, I think that's fabulous. What did they do at the spa for your peekaboo? They just leather condition it. I think they clean it and then condition it um, and polish the hardware. So, yeah, it all looked very impressive. They had a bunch of products um, set up and they had gloves and they had little tools that they used. So I didn't really watch them. I was kind of shopping, but, yeah. So, yeah, you hear it here first. And is Tiffany doing the Tiffany Baguette re-release or is Fendi doing it? Because um, I know that Tiffany seemed to have more allocation of the baguettes than what Fendi did, at least from the people that I've spoken to. Jolene Z, my love for Fendi started because of you. People always say once you go, Hermes, you never go back. But after purchasing my lilac sequin baguette, a fire was lit. I also requested an MTO today. <laughs> oh, yes. Fantastic. Good for you. Um, I hope they I hope that you get it. Um, now, just getting on track with the MTO process. Um, there's a few questions that I had come through on Instagram that I wanted to address. I did not share the price of my MTO on um, my video, and I'm not going to do it now, other than to say, you know how the Australian dollar is. Um, I can say this was twice the price of the mirror embroidery baguette. That's what I can say. Um, and you you pay a 50% deposit on the day you sign the contract. Now, with regard to the contract and the appointment, some people have been asking if you get an appointment, is there a requirement to buy? And I would say it's like any other luxury event if you're invited along you accept the invitation along with an expectation that it's a limited opportunity and they have selected you because of your status because of what you've talked about um and it's an opportunity and I think the awkwardness around what if I can't design something that I like and I want to buy is a real concern for people doing a made-to-order. Um, certainly um, Nadia, who I did my appointment with, so I had an appointment first and then she had her appointment. She couldn't land on a design that she liked. She continued to work with the store and Rome to try and come up with something and it just didn't happen. Um and sure, there was, you know, some visible, like, disappointment both from her and also Fendi that they weren't able to make it happen. But I don't think it was anything that would be damaging to the relationship going forward. In saying that, my advice is do not accept an MTO appointment unless you fully intend on going through the process designing an item and signing a contract and paying a deposit I think you would just feel yuck um so I feel like it's oh sorry I feel like it's not um it's not wise to go to those appointments going maybe I will maybe I won't you should go thinking I absolutely will and then if it doesn't happen that's an exception if that makes sense. Um, I didn't feel pressure um, to sign up. I certainly felt that there were plenty of items in the boutique that I would purchase if I couldn't land on an MTO, but I couldn't do both. So I spent a lot of time looking around the store and trying things on before the appointment. Um, hopefully that's making sense to everyone. Can you guys still hear me? Because the chat's stopped. So I just want to know if you're, are you still there? Yes, good. Okay. Um, so yes, um, in terms of pricing expectations, I think Australian dollars, the kind of cheaper range is around 15,000. Um, and obviously the more exotic you add, the more surface area there is. 
um, the more expensive it's going to be. And no doubt it only occurred to me after that if I hadn't designed such a tiny bag, if I'd designed a full-size baguette, which I did in the mink, and I think it was quoted around $25,000, and that's why I bought my Fendi first in the pink mink because it was $8,000. And I thought, wow, why would I do that in an MTO? Um, So, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I know for, I'm pretty certain that this will never be a commercial release for Fendi. Um, But sometimes there are materials and designs that come out. If you're not picking something that's truly original, chances are you could pay three times as much to have it customised when it may well be released as a part of a seasonal collection. Does the chain strap you have come in ruthenium? Good question, Jen. Um, No, not so far. It comes in silver and gold, but that is a good question. Um, Leslie, did they take strap measurements? Are there two straps? No, they didn't take strap measurements. This is the standard strap length for this baguette trunk, and it's really long. I've got it on the shortest one, which is perfect. Um, But no, they don't customise the strap length at all. I I didn't ask. Maybe they do, um, but I didn't ask. Um, Hannah, your made-to-water showcases. To me, why Fendi is the most wonderful brand and I would rather spend on a Fendi made to water than buy a mess bag. So much more creativity with Fendi. Yeah, um, even when I was talking to my sales associates at Louis Vuitton and Dior and I took them through the process because Dior had their made to water trunk shortly after the Fendi one and I said, look, I can't. And they said, just come and have a look anyway. And Connor and I went and had a look and I took her through my process. She said, oh, we don't offer anything like that. The Louis Vuitton exotics, same thing. It's all done by iPad. Um, They give you concepts. They do the conversations with their design team offline. You're not involved. And then they report back and it's kind of facilitated that way. With the Fendi made to order, my experience was a Zoom direct with the design team in Italy. And they have this you know, a a package that kind of comes up first and takes you into the palazzo and into the VIP room where you're met by the same woman who does the Zooms for the collection previews. And she tells you individually how lucky you are and then she connects you to the design team and they're like, hi, welcome to Fendi. We're happy to be working with you on your made to order. Where would you like to start? And, And you just do. Um, the only limitation, as I said, was with the Galusha, the Stingray, I couldn't just have it as the leather trim. I had to have the whole bag in that design. They wouldn't budge on that. And I understand why. The full crystal baguette was $30,000. And okay, thanks, Meredith. Yep, that's good context. So a regular size baguette in the Swarovski crystals, which they had there as part of the trunk collection, was beautiful. $30,000, whereas the Crystal Fendi First was less than $8,000. So, again, it's about my advice would be do an MTO if you really want to personalise it. It's not to do something that would be commercially viable to reproduce. What an incredible experience. Yes, it was, Hannah. If cool is still in, (laughs) this is so cool. Cool's always in. The bag actually looks fab with the shirt that you're wearing today. It's actually a dress, um, Michelle, but, yeah, it, it, it does. I mean, the reason, even though this bag is pretty loud, the reason it goes with so many of my things is because now I've done my closet detox. I only have cool colors and they all work together. They're either analogous where they sit next to each other on the colour wheel or they're complementary where they sit opposite each other like pink and green. And so they all go together. There's real harmony in my wardrobe and this bag will go with everything. So just depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> um, if you do an MTO, you definitely deserve to do it in person and have the ability to see your choices. 
Erica, that is one thing that I would love to do. Um, when you do the MTO, the trunk has a selection of samples of each of the different materials, um, so embroideries, furs, um, exotics, um, sequins and things, they kind of fall under embroideries. But it's just a selection. When I did my made to order Zoom, they brought out slabs of samples. And when I said I wanted a pink, a blush pink, there were like five blush pinks that they pulled out and showed them to me, just put them all across. I'm like, I like that one, I like that one, I don't like those ones, and they moved them across. And I said, well, what do you have in that kind of colour tone in mink, shaved mink or hairy mink? And I'm like, both, show me. And then they brought them all out. And I think that's probably where the uncertainty and the trust comes from, which is why I wanted to share my sketch compared to my bag is the likeness is very, very close. Obviously, you can't really get the texture and those sorts of things, but maybe they'll start to do 3D kind of rendering to show you. Um, but it's very, very close. It's very hard, though, not to be able to pick things up and feel them in the colours and kind. if you're a very visual person, you have to trust and it's a lot of money to just trust the process. I feel like this is a great example of trusting the process and that it works out. But I understand for a lot of people they would never feel comfortable to do that. <laughs> Bella, there's one that there's a full crystal baguette that travels with the made to water trunk. Um, there's a snow white um, long haired mink mini peekaboo as well which is amazing there's an astrakhan that travels as well so yeah there's some pretty cool bags what a dream to do an mto yeah absolutely and if you've watched my videos and my vlog i didn't decide to to fly to melbourne until literally like two days before and i literally flew in it was a 24-hour visit um, because I did not want to miss out on the opportunity to see these pieces and have this experience. Oh, too much talking. Hello, Kinsey. <laughs> so, yes, um, top tips for an MTO experience. I think... Don't do an MTO with Fendi unless you know Fendi pieces. That was one. No, it's not a Tiffany straw. <laughs> that was one thing that I mentioned on a comment on Instagram this morning. Um, if you don't know Fendi pieces, don't start with an MTO because you need to know how the pieces actually work for you. Obviously, I've never owned one of these before, but that's exactly why I wanted to do my MTO with this piece. Um the bigger the bag, the more surface area, the more expensive it's going to be. Do not accept an appointment if you have no intention on following through and the price is going to scare you. Expect that it will be, so Australian dollars, expect that the average is going to be about $25,000 and then be pleasantly surprised if it's cheaper, um, which it was in my case. Um I think you cannot design a bag based on budget, so there's not prices attached to things. Um, you get your sketch, you decide which sketch you want to progress with or sketches, and then they will provide you with a quote and contract. Um, so there is a lot of unknowns when you're in your appointment. You can design the most wonderful piece and it comes out and it's just way out of your price range. Um, then, you know, that's what happens. You could potentially ask your sales associate to go back and modify some pieces um, that may make it cheaper, you know, so swap out crocodile with ostrich might be an option, um, might make a significant change to the price um, as an example. <laughs> um, what are my other tips? Uh, don't do it remotely if you can help it. 
if there's a trunk and an in-store experience, go there and do it. I know it adds to the cost, but in my opinion, absolutely worth it. Um, I think it's good to have a trusted person with you to help challenge your thinking and kind of push you to be more creative and bold. Um, but you pick your person carefully because if it's somebody who tries to talk you out of things, it's probably going to hamper your, um, your experience. I would concentrate on what you're saying, but I keep staring at the bag and getting lost. <laughs> I totally get it. Did the MTO take a year due to it being an exotic and coming back into the country? I don't know. I think um, Fendi did around 60 made-to-order appointments in Australia in March. Um, so that's 60... Let's say it's 30 to 45-minute appointments. Um, on top of the collections that they already have, um, knowing that we have very strict importing of exotics, the time frame they gave was 30th of November from the 30th of March. Um, I don't know if that's a formula or, or a best guess Italian time, right, whenever. Um, but I didn't know if that date meant that's when it would be ready or that's when I would have it. Um, and obviously it was about three months after that that I got it. So I could put that three months down to the CITES, the import part, and maybe it was on time. I, I, I don't know and I don't think they'd tell me either. <laughs> um we attempted to change materials to lower the price. And did you have a price limit going into the appointment? Um, no, uh, no, I never went back. Like the process, it was such a visceral, audible feeling of, oh, we've done something pretty cool here when the design came back um, and the reaction from the designers there's no way I would have changed it. I would have just said yes or no. And I had three fabulous designs to choose from. The mink baguette was beautiful. The galusha trunk in the green was beautiful. And this was beautiful. And But when I truly looked at what was overwhelmingly calling me, it was this one. And so I didn't even bother looking at the other ones or looking at prices or anything. I was smitten, you could say. Um, did I have a price limit? Yes. Um, I think I was expecting around 20. I didn't realise the buckles were so expensive. <laughs> if you ever have the ability to purchase a luxury bag, I'm flying to Australia so you can be my partner in crime for the first bag. Yes. Oh, if I ever have. Yes, Erica. I'd love to shop with you. Um, we'd have a great time for sure. You wouldn't have much choice here in Australia though. New York would be a better place to shop. Um, okay, cool. No more questions. Um, so, yeah, back to top tips. Um, don't compromise. It's a made-to-order. Um, meaning... If you can't have everything you want, I don't think a compromise is a good idea. I think just walk away. Um, I also think that you're not making a bag for resale for anyone else. It's for you. And one of the things that I've learned going through this process is what it truly feels like to stand out on your own and just do something that makes you happy. It feels a bit scary. Um, it feels a little bit, yeah, it feels a bit scary and a bit isolating to kind of go, well, I stand behind this. This is me. And if you don't like it, that's okay. I think YouTube prepares you well for the fact that not everyone will like you because the bigger my channel is getting, the more people are happy to tell me they don't like me. Um, 
which is confronting, but also um, it kind of helps you build skills around how to deal with that just generally in your life. And if that means carrying a handbag or spending money on a handbag that other people don't love but I do and I can do it without feeling threatened or isolated um, I think that's one of the best things to come out of this process for me is kind of stand behind who I am. And if you're going to do a made to order, um, you should make something that is you, not something that everyone else will love. Um, this is for you, Shelley. You like another close up. So <laughs> it's so funny when the sales associates pull their gloves on and you know, they're so careful and I'm just like touching it. So here's your close-up. I'll take the things out of the inside and I'll show you the inside close-up as well. Oop. Khaki. Nothing else? Okay. So there is the inside. I don't know if it's going to show you. Fendi Dale, made to order. You don't get to choose the zucker on the inside. Um, that is the, that's what they come with, a zucker interior. With the baguettes and the peekaboos, I believe you get to choose the internal colour as well, which is why the price increases on those quite significantly. You just want to touch it? Yeah, it's like a little treasure. It looks so pretty. Like this is what it looks like. I think this is a great representation of it, um, what you're seeing now. But, yeah, such a, you know, I, <laughs> it's crazy to me that, I have something like this in my collection. It really is. It really is. Um, are there any other questions about the made to water or about my bag in particular that you'd like to ask? <laughs> Bella, this is Joan Collins as a Fendi trunk. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Leslie, I look forward to hearing about what all the bag stalkers like me say about this one of a kind when they see it out in the wild. Yeah, that will be interesting. Um, it certainly will be. You'd like to see a comparison with the Petite Mal? Well, you might get to do that soon. Mind you, I need to stop shopping. Um, there's two pieces that I have that I haven't showed you guys yet. I've filmed the videos, but this came, so it kind of pushed my schedule out. And there's another piece that I've just pre-ordered. <laughs> that should arrive in a few weeks um I've just got to stop I've got an overseas holiday that I'm planning and just reserving accommodation and flights and things and we know how incredibly expensive that is so I gotta stop I gotta stop but there are a few petite mouths that I'm interested in <laughs> I thought you stole Meredith's petite mouth I tried to Matt but her dog stopped me ginger nut is very loyal <laughs> and the Grinch got stopped from stealing the petite mouth but when Connor and I were in Sydney we went to Luxlink it was closed and for some reason they don't reply to any of their messages I messaged them and I'm like what happened to your Instagram and they're like we got shut down I said are you still trading they're like yes and I said, I went to your Sydney store, but you were closed. You had a lot of petite mouths in the window. Yes. Could you send me pictures? Nothing. No response, no reply. There's no listing anywhere. I'm like, I need a personal shopper in Sydney to go there and check them out for me because there were some really cool seasonal styles. But anyway, it's all right. I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. My time will come. Mate, you could have bribed that dog with it. With a snossage and she would have let you take whatever you wanted. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm not sure that you would have though, Meredith. <laughs> yes, um, definitely I'm still looking for a seasonal petite male. Um, 
I will still continue to search for one. I don't think it's something that they're ever going to stop making. So obviously the price is going to change, but that's all relative. Thank you, Adele. Um, any other questions about this one as we, we come up to an hour? Can you believe we've been chatting for an hour? Here's a question for you if you don't have a question about my bag. Um, I'm getting my nails done. What should I get done? At the moment, I've got this ombre French with like squiggles on. What should I do? Any ideas? Ah, Shelly, the green material, it's beads. So I know that you're a little bit late. So it's actually beading. If you can see that. Pink with green ombre. Mm, I don't know if that would look any good, Meredith. That might look a bit meh. <laughs> Oh, how would I do that? I don't know. My nail tech will hate me. I definitely need an ombre green. So what do you think, like a dark green to a lighter green maybe or like green to white? I don't know. Is the bag heavy, Matt asks? Um, I guess you could say it's heavy for the size, yeah. Yep, you can't put much in it though, so you can't really add a lot to the weight. Hmm. <laughs> Just plain pink. Yeah, they do look good, but in another week they won't. And I get this kind of colour so that you can't see when they grow out. So it makes the growing out a lot less obvious. Oh, that's a good idea, Jen. Pink nails with a green gem i don't know if she does on the ring finger for like valentine's day or something that'd be cute thank you sophie ruthenium tips <laughs> that would be extra oh pink just pink saying my connection's unstable for some reason guys but um, I'm going to have to pull it up there and just say thank you all for joining the live. Thank you so much for all of your support on the journey. One of the best things about this is being able to share it with you guys. Um, that is, if I'd have not had a YouTube channel, I'd be hiding this. Um, I would be playing it down. I would not be celebrating it. And it's thanks to you guys that I'm able to do that. So thank you so, so much for being here, um, sharing the love. And regardless of what you personally think about this, you've been so kind and encouraging to me. And I am truly grateful for that. So thumb up the live stream, everyone. Thanks, Bella. Um, absolutely do. Um, if you do have any other questions about MTO, don't hesitate to get in touch with me on the comments of this video so that everyone can see it rather than a DM um, because then everyone can read the comments and see the responses there. So fantastic. That's it. Sayonara. Adios. Bonjour. Ciao. Um, thank you so much. See you next time.